Welcome back, gentlemen, to this, the fourth video in the five video series on how to prepare for your five day fasting challenge. And in this video, I'm going to give you all my training principles associated with lifting during a fast. What are the principles associated with getting under the barbell, maintaining strength while you are at least embarking on this five day fasting challenge? Because it depends, it changes. You know, you could be doing typical OMAD fasting and there's a different way to train or you could be doing prolonged fasting you know like I did for 10 days some of our friends did up to 20 days 40 days so you're gonna approach it differently based on what we're you know what your your fasting template and, and goals are and so these are specific to what we'll be engaging in which is our five-day fasting challenge so very briefly I'm just gonna go over some of the principles I'm not gonna give you a program to follow Whatever program you're following, you're just going to modify it during the fast if you feel it necessary. You know, a lot of it is subjective, so you're going to have to kind of feel around. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a warning <laughs> not to overdo it during the fast. Um, the only reason why I can give you that warning is because I'm an extremist. And uh, when I was first starting my fasting and when I did the 10-day fast, I was beating the shit out of myself doing like three workouts a day. I started digging ditches in my backyard to plant bamboo. Uh, yeah, I wanted to see how much punishment I could take. And it hit me. It hit me pretty hard. I was happy I did it. Um, I was willing to sacrifice. I, wanted, I really just wanted to break myself down. Um, but that's not necessarily the case for you. So I would warn you that if you don't want to break yourself down, uh, follow these principles and be mindful with yourself. Be subjective. Trust yourself. See, a part of what is going to happen to you, for you, when you begin fasting, is your sensitivity to self it increases, heightens. You become more intuitive, more in touch with your own body. We're constantly clogging with food. We're detached from Quite a, quite a bit of the intelligence that would be available to us if the body was free. And so you'll be able to listen to yourself a little bit better. A lot of people, you know, a lot of young men come to me for a myriad of different reasons, including what is my path in life, Elliot? What do I do in life? How do I find my purpose? Well, I can tell you one thing, that if you start fasting, you'll start to get out of your own way. And the, the peace, the stillness, the solitude, the silence that's associated with fasting will open you up to be led by God, your higher self, your soul, if you will. So um, you'll begin to trust yourself better, trust your intuition, and trust your, trust your judgment when you go about training during these five days. So principle number one, uh, we're not trying to make gains while we're fasting. I think that's the first thing that you need to get out of our, our heads. Of course, a good reason why many of us are here for the physical benefits of it, but a part of our addiction, at least, you know, guys that hang around with me, is our addiction to physicality, our addiction to muscle, addiction to gains, addiction to strength. I love it! Well, we want to set that aside for a season. Set it aside for a little while. Let that be less important than the development of your character, your soul, the virtue of steadfastness and detachment. So, uh... But, but what we want to do is at least maintain some strength. And, uh, and that's a lot of fun to do also. You know, so it's, it's cool because you maintain strength. But it's fun. It's fun. It's fun to lift. We like to lift. So, but you want to stimulate the central nervous system and not kill the muscle. And so what does that mean? That means that we're not pumping with high reps and short rest intervals and doing drop sets and rest pauses and all that shit that we know breaks us the fuck down and builds muscle. We ain't, we're not doing that during this five days. I would, suge I would suggest you don't do it uh, because you're gonna break down and you're not gonna build back up right away, especially in, in this stage of the process. Now, this, is, this goes beyond the scope of this video, but apparently science has shown that fasting also stimulates growth hormone and it's muscle sparing. So we've got that to look forward to. In the meantime, we're just getting the ball rolling and we're going to treat ourselves well. So we don't want to pump. We want to just stimulate. We just want to stimulate the nervous system. Let the, let the brain talk to the body a little bit about what it can fucking do. Bang! And the way we will do that 
Uh, I kind of got these out of order, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start right here with number two. So the way we kind of do that is with high intensity, right? High intensity means heavy weight. Intensity is weight. Uh, you know, you go to a lot of fitness gyms and they'll have their high intensity classes where they're bouncing around with little weights on those blocks. That's not intensity. That's usually a lot of volume and density. Uh, they get it mixed up. Intensity is heavy. So we want to lift heavy. We want to lift low volume, right? What does low volume mean? Low volume is like two to four sets, maybe five sets of two to four, five reps. Anything more than five, it's higher volume. You're starting to get into bodybuilding volume, starting to get into endurance volume. We want to lift with heavy weights. We want to keep the volume low. So threes, fives, doubles. Uh, and then high frequency. Because you're not beating the shit out of your muscle, uh, you're gonna recover a little bit quicker. And so you can do, you know, every other day, the same, you know, same muscle, same body parts. What I actually suggest is full body. Going full body, say, you know, we're doing the five days. When you want to lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday, do a full body. You know, choose your favorite compound movements. It was all over the place, but here we go. Com compound movements. And, uh, and what you're going to do, if you're doing it every day, say every other day training, and you're using the compound movements, and you're following my suggestion to go high intensity, low volume, you can alternate this is very beautiful. This is a great way to, to train and maintain strength. Alternate between grind and go workouts. So there's a little bit of a bonus. I want to go into this very briefly for you here. So the difference between a grind and a go workout, they both stimulate the same sort of muscle fiber, but just in a different way. Grinding is about choosing a perceived or giving your body the perception that a weight is heavy by squeezing real tight and creating that irritation. Squeezing tight and going slow. So say for example, I'm doing, let's say I'm doing a bench press here, right? Normally, you know, we're doing one rack. Boom. Boom. Well, with the, with the grind method, you're gonna unrack and then you're gonna squeeze your hands as tight as you can and you're gonna try to maintain that squeezing of the hands. The squeezing of the hands is the healing of the land. It's all about squeezing of the hand with a lot of the exercises here. Squeeze your hands as tight as you fucking hand like you wanna break that barbell, you want it to dis dis disintegrate in your palms and you're gonna maintain that tension while you come all the way down about three, two, one. Pause, but maintain the tension. And then three, two, one. You can even go up to four seconds like I'm doing right now. And then squeeze. So, dude, if you can bench press 315 and you do that with like 205, it's going to feel heavy as fuck. And if you're doing uh, three to four reps and you're going that slow, that's the grind, baby. Let's talk about the go. So just choose your exercises. Choose your compound movements wisely. Give yourself this opportunity. It's just five fucking days. If you're gonna go back to doing lean hybrid muscle or five three one, whatever you're doing after that, go go right ahead. Go back, go right back, go right back, go right back to doing it. Uh, but here, with fasting is kind of a pattern interrupt. So look, give yourself the permission to change things up a little bit. Uh, and then go. What does go mean? So grind. Think about it. Grind. Go. So go is about moving weights quickly, right? So you don't need to go very heavy. Think uh, dynamic method in the, in the West Side conjugate training, right? You know, they take the bands. That's it. Right? With the, with the good mornings with the bands. You could use bands. You don't need to use bands. But the whole idea is just to choose a weight that you can move quickly. Uh, I like medicine balls. You could do some medicine ball work. Um, again, a lot of people get confused and because it's, you're not going very heavy, they think that the, it turns into conditioning. And so they're doing like, you know, 100 reps with the medicine ball. No, 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 that's not what this is about, bro. This is about stimulating the nervous system, not killing the muscle. Principles to live by as you train during your five-day 
fasting challenge. And then finally, avoid failure. There's, there's a myriad of really good reasons why we want to avoid failure, but particularly during this five-day process, you don't want to train to failure. It's not necessary. And I would invite you all just to have the, the mindset that this is a pattern interrupt. You're, we're, we're, we're giving up some things for a while while we do this, and it's a good idea. It's a good idea to change things up for a little bit. Give your body new stimulus. So be prepared for that. Uh, there's so much more I want to say, and I'm sure I'll continue this series uh, saying those things. But that's it for today. These are just principles. Like I said, you could probably still follow your same program, just modify it a little bit for the five days. And we start on Monday. I'll be back tomorrow with the final video, at least it was my intention, uh, to make this a five video series. So I'll, I'll end this with the fifth video on supplements. And so, as I mentioned, there are optional supplements that you can use, you can choose to use. You don't need to use. In many cases, it's better not to use. Uh, and then there are mandatory supplements you must use or um, I highly recommend you use. So that's it. I'll see you guys in that video. Have a great day. Done.